Our thematic expression. Come on, let's say it with a bit more oomph. Our thematic expression. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. Let's greet the guys in the overflow there at the top. Let's say what's up, yo. What's up, Kea Bangwell? Climbing up trees. Praise the Lord. I'm just kidding. Jesus, the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, Holy Ghost. Now, Bangwele, don't let the, the term ghost fill you. Or rather, fool you rather. Ghost means spirit, but with terms of the King James language. Amen. Now, obviously about two weeks ago, we had a baptism in water. Um, we had a, usually have a teaching before we, we baptize the brethren. Now, one, one of the anchor texts that we really look into as we baptize is the book of Hebrews, where the writer to the Hebrews uh, speaks of the elementary doctrines of the Christian faith. He talks about repentance from dead works. Um, he talks about... Um, the resurrection of the dead, the laying on of hands, and then he talks about the issue of baptisms. Somebody say baptisms. So not baptism, but baptisms. In other words, in plural, in plural, baptisms. And, and the word baptism is a word that, or let me say the Greek word for it is baptizo. Somebody say baptizo. Which means to be submerged, submerged, to be immersed, to be immersed, saturated, immersed. Which means that if you were sprinkled, you need to be baptized. If you were sprinkled, like three, on the face. <laughs> In fact, before I forget this announcement, I'll come back to the word. We have lifeline training after the service. Amen. Lifeline. Those who uh, would like to join the counseling team, please make sure that after the service, you don't leave. There'll be training downstairs. Food will be provided. Amen. Praise the Lord. And of course, we've got Pastor Ngomalo here in the front. Pastor Ngomalo, can you just, let's give it up for Pastor Ngomalo. Amen. Praise God. Now, as I was saying, if, if, if you were sprinkled, you've not been baptized, you were sprinkled. When we talk about baptism, we're talking about being submerged, to be immersed in water. Now, from what we've come to understand from scripture is that there is more than one baptism. So, there is baptism in water. Scripture talks about the baptism of John. Uh, Paul writing to the church in Corinth speaks about baptism into the body of Christ. Now, how are you baptized into the body of Christ? You are baptized into the body of Christ through uh, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. When you believe in his name, you are immediately translated into a mystical body, the body of Jesus Christ. When, when we talk about the body of Christ, even though you are not yet a great Christian, we should include you. And then, there's also what is referred to as baptism of the holy spirit who has ever heard of the term baptism of the holy spirit baptism in the holy spirit now you you might have had different variations of this particular word some will say the day i was filled with the spirit i was filled with the spirit now the, the reason why we use baptism because we are speaking about the initial infilling of the holy spirit now this is what we need to understand the same way you, you don't fill your car with fuel once. You don't get filled once. We, we need a refueling. We need a refill. Hence, we even have what we call midweek refill. I know, I remember when I was growing up and my mom would say, I must go and shower. And I would say, look, I showered last week. <laughs> I was still growing up. Goodness me. It's like as if I'm still doing it now. I was growing up. 
but many of us we talk about that one encounter as if that's the end of it hey i ate last week man i drank last week i washed last week no 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 we we need a refilling for those who have been filled In Acts chapter 2, we see an, the, a baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. But in Acts chapter 4, the very same people who are now praying for boldness, instead of God saying, hey, you are now bold, he fills them up with the Holy Spirit. In other words, the infilling of the Spirit will capacitate you for boldness. Let's look at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. Verse 11. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. You, you see, Bangwana, the people who were baptized last week, I baptized them. I am the one who plunged them into water. But, but, but there's another baptism that only Jesus can do. He says, He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. I'm about to make a bad example. Let's say there was a fire here. Do you know how disorganized or how much commotion would have in this place? You know, you know, you know there are some people who are afraid of the anointing of the Holy Spirit because they are afraid of the disorder that comes with it. No, no, no. There's fire here, Bangwell. You know, you know the way the, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit operates sometimes. Look at Acts chapter 2. When the Holy Spirit comes upon the believers, uh, Paul had to make it, or rather Peter, had to make an apology and say, these men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only 9 a.m. in the morning. Of course, he had not been to South Africa. 9 a.m. is late. Late. Uh, by that time, uh, we're now just preparing. To <laughs> he says, these men are not baptized as, or rather they're not they are not drunk as you suppose. But no, what was written in the book of Joel has been fulfilled at your hearing. When God said in the last days, I'll pour my spirit on all flesh. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. But can you, can you just realize this, that when they were filled, they, they, the, the only words that the people knew to describe this phenomenon was that these people are drunk. Have you seen yourself when you're drunk? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have you seen other people when they are drunk? You don't get drunk, you know? Tipsy, tipsy, tipsy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. You can be an introvert. But all of a sudden, you want to speak to people on their face. Like, like hey, bro, go easy, man. <laughs> But when some of the things that we do, we don't understand why we do them. I mean, why do I say, why you do them? You know, I could say, why you do them? Because there's a microphone. But, but something has entered me. And, and, and it's an intoxicant. It, it alters the way that at times I behave myself. Because there, there has been a baptism. There, there has been a baptism. You can see someone who is so introverted. But when the Holy Spirit come upon them, all of a sudden this person is screaming, making noise. Like, do you really have to run around? Do you have to? Like, we're not even runners. Like, you know, but, but when he comes. I don't worship because I'm an introvert. Get filled. We need a drunk version of you. Hey, do not get drunk with wine way in this dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So, so the issue is not drunkenness. The issue is what is. Yeah. 
I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes one who is powerful than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. Pastor Mari, I'm saved. I pay my tithe. What's up with this infilling stuff? I just want to be a good Christian. I don't want to be in people's business. But Manuela, that is extremely selfish. To say it nicely. Hey, Pastor Martin, I don't want to start a church. Who said you must be filled to start a church? And, and of course, there are some sisters as well. They're like, hey, I don't want to be filled and become a prophetess. You know they don't marry prophetesses. <laughs> They're afraid of prophets. <laughs> like they'll marry us late because we are full of fire. Huh? Yeah. But, but that is a selfish way of doing life. Listen to this. Listen to this. When God anoints you, he doesn't anoint you for yourself. He anoints you for other people. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. There is someone who will remain in poverty and spiritual poverty. Because of the unanointed version of yourself. You're a good person. You're just not anointed. He's anointed me to preach the gospel. L let me break it down. The life of a believer or the process around the relationship with the Holy Spirit is twofold. Number one, when you are born again, who's born again here? Awesome. Those who are not, you see those ones who didn't raise their hands. When we sing Lomu Songaga, please run to the front. I must not even like, you know, there, I feel it in my spirit. There's one more. You did not raise your hand. And there was a lot of people who didn't raise their hand. So I'm expecting church to be moved with the harvest that's coming. Can we thank God for the harvest? <laughs> when, when, when you receive Christ, you are born of the spirit. In other words, you experience what Christ experienced when he was born. Jesus was born of the Spirit. But even though he was born of the Spirit, his ministry never started until he was baptized in the Spirit. Okay, okay, okay. The, Jesus said, I came that you may have life. One, but it doesn't say life only. It says life in abundance. So when you are born again, you receive the life of Christ. When you are baptized in the spirit, you receive the life in abundance. Hey, I need more meat. But you don't want the spirit. Come on. We, we, we need life in abundance. Jesus Christ did what he did. Not because he was born of the spirit only. He was baptized. The Bible says how Jesus or how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and power and he went about healing the sick and all those who were oppressed by the devil because God was with him. Now, the, 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 Peter speaking says that the reason why Jesus did what he did was not because he was God but it was because he was anointed. Anointed. Bangwale, Jesus said, I must go. It is expedient. Somebody say expedient. Use that word once in a while. Drop it. It's expedient. Not... <laughs> he says, it is expedient that I go so that he, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the comforter, the intercessor, the standby, the strengthener may come if Jesus saw it fit that he had to go so that the Holy Spirit may come yet you think it's okay to live a Christian life without either the infilling or the refilling of the Spirit you are in error but Mwale, you know one of the things we don't understand is this the, Jesus says to the, to the Pharisees you err because you do not understand what the scriptures but I stop at that. And the power of God. Now, why do we only see error in the area of doctrine? 
But we don't see error in the area of powerlessness. One, one of the marks of the end times is that people will have a form of godliness but not have the power thereof. But whether we can debate all we like, but what we need are demonstrations. Because, you know, I was even thinking to myself, the reason why Abba Zalwana go to Sangomas, they are scared because they won't marry because they do this type of things, is because they have not seen the power of God. But there's a generation of people who say, we, we, we have heard of your fame. We stand in our teeth. Renew them on our day. Make them known in our time. There must be a demonstration. But those demonstrations will come when someone has been filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not enough to have the theory. Let's look at Luke chapter 24 verse 49. Luke 24 verse 49. I need to finish quickly. We don't want to pray for people. Listen to this. I am going to send you what my father has promised you. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Come on, Jesus. Did you not say, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation? Now you are telling us to stay. You, you said go. But now you're saying stay. And we can speak around that, that we, we need to be a people who need to, who can distinguish between what God said and what God is saying. He said, go, but wait. Hey, I've seen you walk on water. Go, but wait. I've seen you multiply the five loaves and the two fish. Go, but wait. Yes, you have seen me in my resurrection body. Go, but wait. Why must you wait so that you can be endured with power? Clothed with power from where? From where? You know, some of us, we like our stagazelos. No, it's okay to like your stars, but don't think you're a good Christian because of your ancestry. Hey, Tinabom Kize. O Kabazel. O Tuabe. How about Unguma? Los Wit. Like you know us, I have it. We're in charge of the church. <laughs> No, no, no. It's not power from your ancestry. It's power from on high. What will bring transformation in the lives of people? It's not culture. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. He, he makes a decision because sometimes, you know what's even funny? I've found that every church has its own spirit. If you can listen to me pray in tongues, you can tell her from the assemblies of God. I promise you. If you come close, like if you are close, you be like, guy, oh, this is the seed of pain with this. <laughs> Faith mission people have their own tongues. Yeah. I know them. <laughs> African gospel church people are from honor, have their own tongues. The AG, yeah, they have their own tongues. They have their own tongues. But I've seen that Ubuntu can be full of his spirit. Say so on to. And not be filled with the power from on high. You are ticking all the boxes. We are putting you into committees. We are using you as an example because you, the, church wise, you are you tick your, your, your uniform is clean. You don't swear to anyone when you are wearing your uniform, but you take off your uniform. I've heard this one guy says, You are lucky I'm wearing my uniform today. You are lucky. If you caught me. <laughs> But here is the thing, Manuel. We don't just get the spirit of EGC because even EGC has its own spirit. Yeah. It's because it's a bit unfair. I'm making fun of this church, but even us. Hey, thematic expression. Hey. <laughs> if you are not careful, you'll be baptized into modernism while you are running away from tradition. Modernism has its own spirit as well. You are we we you are so cool, man. <laughs> this guy is cool, man. Because even now, for us pastors, it's like you, it's like the anointing. Uh, swag. <laughs> but 
Because when a swag can break chains, it's the anointing that breaks yokes and removes patterns. I don't need someone who's going to entertain me. I need a breaking of chains. I need a breaking of chains. I need a breaking of chains. Hmm. Pastor, I don't want to be a chair. I don't want to be a. I just want to be a good guy. Me, pastor, I don't need to be filled with the Holy Spirit because I'm a kingdom financier. Well, you can finance the kingdom. Amen. I am the kingdom and you are there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's a bad joke. Amen. <laughs> but here is the thing. Your number one calling is not to be a worship. Your number one calling is not Mary, it's not even to be a preacher. And you know, there is nothing as dangerous as being a preacher. I'm telling you. Why, what do I mean? It's hard. You see, like we'll talk about, don't make your profession your, your identity. One of the biggest struggles we have as pastors is that we can't separate from the fact that the pastoral element is a function. It's not who you are. It's, it's what you do. But here's the thing. Before there can be an apostle, there must be a disciple. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, number one, follow me. What, what, what do you do, number one? And I will what? Make you a fish of men. But before you become a fish of men, please be a follower of Jesus. Because there are people who have mastered the art of fishing, but they've never mastered the art of following. Follow Jesus. And that is to say, number one, I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. You, you know what? You know maybe what, what, what a disciple is? Who here is saying, I'm looking for internship? I'm looking for an intent. Like, I'm done with my diploma or degree. I'm looking for an internship. So, 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 so when, when the, the disciples of Christ were, were, were the interns of Christ, they, they were interning not on how to be Christians. On how to be like Christ. Yeah. That's another thing. You know you can grow in Christianity and not grow in Christ. Yeah. There is no anointing to be a Christian. There's an anointing to be like Christ. Okay. You are a what? A disciple. It requires the anointing. But here's the thing. Every single disciple... JB, every single disciple, every single one of us, there's a call on us to make disciples. All of us. All of us. No, me, I'm part of the cleaning team. Where are the disciples? I'm part of parking. Parking, I see. But disciples, where? You know what that thing needs? Anointing. Do you see that you cannot afford to live a life unanointed? Amen. The lack of anointing makes you extremely selfish and self-centered. Yeah. You think you are part of the bless me cloud. But when the anointing comes upon you, you become a blessing. A blessing. Okay. Let's, let's close it off on, let me look at John chapter 14, verse 15. Just read a few scriptures, and then we're going to call for people who either need a, an initial feeling, or those who say, Pastor Mad, I need a, a refilling. John 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commands. Somebody say, Jesus is love language. Is obedience. Not this touch and <laughs> young lions and uh, my love language is touch. Hi. <laughs> this Dio says love language is gifts. Hi, Singapore. Hi. Can we rest? If you love me, keep my commands and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate. 
The word there for another, I heard Pastor Chris explaining, is the word alos, which means another of the same kind. Hence, when I when he leaves, says, Lord, I am with you always. I'm going, but I'm with you always because I'm now coming in a different form to you. I will ask the Father, and He will give you another of the same kind, another who is able to walk on water, another who's able to stand out of the grave and say, Lazarus, come forth. Another, we don't have something that is junior. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is resident within you. And if it raised him from the dead, it will quicken your mortal body. Quicken your mortal body. You are not without God. If only was there 2,000 years ago, and the Holy Spirit is like, am I a joke to you? <laughs> and he will give you another advocate to help you. And be with what? He'll be what? And of course, we'll cry once in a while, don't leave us. But what was his promise? What was his promise? You know what? One of the things that pushes us or that pushes us away from a greater level of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. It's condemnation. No, you, you know yourself. <laughs> Your track record. But, but God is saying, even if you leave, I'm here. I'm here. He's a covenant keeping God. It's not a contract. He doesn't stay because you keep your side of the bargain. He stays because he has to be true to his own nature. Has to be true. I will ask the father. Hey, hey, hey. Listen to this. He could have asked for your husband. Like, please ask for my husband. No. <laughs> he feels you need the Holy Spirit. I will ask the father. He could have asked for many things. But he felt it that I need to ask this for these people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, I, I was teaching this past Wednesday around the exceeding greatness of the power that works in us who believe, which was wrought in Christ when he was raised from the dead. And, and my argument was this. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that is resident within you is not even for miracles. It's for you to be a child of God. Think about it. You, some of you are not happy with God. Like, hey, God, we agreed that at 25 I'd be married. And already, still, young lions, hey, hi, how are you doing? Inbox, you know that type of thing. And you're like, God, you failed me. But somehow, you don't leave him. And it's, the reason why you don't leave is not because it's your own intellect that's keeping you. It's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that is holding you and keeping you in the faith. That even when all your questions are not answered, you say, I will not leave you, God. I love you. I want to give you praise. You are trusting God for a baby. You still don't have that baby. But something on the inside of you is saying, stay. The devil, if he had his way, you would have left him a long time ago. At the end of the year, don't just thank him that you didn't enter into a car accident. Thank him that you are still a child of God. That's a bigger miracle. Hey, I finished my degree. If you backslid, When was the last time you said, Lord, thank you for keeping me in the faith? Because I know you said, Peter, Satan desires to sift you like wheat. But I prayed for you that your faith might not fail. We are not here because of our own doings. We are not here because of our tithing records. We are here because of the grace of God. Finding expression through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, not it. Him. Somebody say him. The moment you call the Holy Spirit and eat, you've missed it. He's not an energy. He's not a vibe, some higher power. He's not some higher power. He's a person capable of being grieved. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. 
You don't grieve it, you grieve him. Amen. He's not an influence. He does have an influence, but he's not an influence. John chapter 15, verse 26. John chapter 15, verse 26. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father. You know, this is another thing we need to get. What is the word that is used here? When the what? Notice, doesn't say when the judge. The Holy Spirit is for you. No, that, that's, that's, a, that's a scary thought for many people. The Holy Spirit is for you. He is a counselor, a master strategist, a master in the law. He is, the, he is a high advocate. He doesn't lose a case. He is looking for ways in the law to make sure that you come out of it. He's saying, come on, God. The blood, the blood, the blood was shed for this one. The blood was shed. He is the advocate. He is an advocate. You know, the worst thing that can ever happen to you, and please don't hear me the wrong way. We might have stayed prosecutors here. We love you. Amen. When, when you get a lawyer from the state, it's not good for you usually. Don't hear me the wrong way. This budget constraints. Amen. So the court can say, we need to get you representation. But that's not how it works. Do you understand what's happening here? It doesn't even say the judge will send you an advocate. Your father is sending you an advocate. He loves you that he gave you his son. He gives you the spirit to... Do, do, do you understand how covered you are? Do you understand that when God was sending his spirit, he was not sending him to, to condemn you. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, shall he not also along with him grant us all things? If you were saved by his death, how much more by his life? Thank you, Emmanuel, God with us. But what about God in us? Oh, the universe of universe cannot contain him. But somehow he says, let me dwell in the regenerate spirit of this one. Hey, come on, somebody. You are loved. The spirit is a sign that God loves you. The book of Ephesians, it says that he's a deposit of what is to come. He is saying, I came. But I'm coming back again. You need the Holy Spirit in your life. Hey, I'm a Harvard graduate. It's not by might, Harvard graduate. No, by power. I, I went to St. Stephen's. I went to Michael House. It means very little in the things of God. What we need is the spirit of the Lord. The flesh profited nothing. It is the spirit that gives life. The life. The words that I speak are spirit. And they are life. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you, Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. he says I will not leave you as offense but the, 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 the release of the spirit is God saying I'm not an absent father the release of the spirit is God saying I will not be negligent with your heart and with your destiny I will not leave you without a father I will not leave you without an advocate I will not leave you without an intercessor I'll be at the right hand of the father making intercessions on your behalf but the spirit will be making intercessions with groans and moans which cannot be uttered do you know how well prayed up you are whom I will send to you Huh. The spirit of what? Let's stand up.
when my advocate comes whom I will send to you from the Father the spirit of truth who goes up from the Father he will testify about me you know one of the things I like about the Holy Spirit he's not self-centered he's Christocentric in the book of Revelation you see the throne of the Father and the Lamb but then you don't see the person of the Holy Spirit but the Bible talks about water flowing from the throne that is as clear as a crystal in other words he's meant to be see through we see the nature of Christ because of the person of the Holy Spirit when he the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truth how about that? I've got many things to say to you but you cannot bear them but when he the spirit of truth comes my God he doesn't just give us a map he gives us a tall guide I want to pray for people who are going to receive the Holy Spirit. And for those who need a refuel, don't, don't even act funny or act proud. You, you need it. You need this. <laughs> there is a river that makes glad the city of God. There is a river. You need to drink from that river. You need to drink from that river. Have you ever drank from that river? Have you received the life in abundance? Have you received his spirit? God is calling a people who are saying, I want to be useful to the kingdom. The anointing in me for me, the anointing upon me for others. There are people who will benefit. There are prophetic people that God is raising up in this place. But it will need a stirring up of the spirit. There are preachers that must come out of this place. There are financiers. There are creatives. There are innovators. There are entrepreneurs. Because listen to this. The anointing when it comes upon the life of the believer. It doesn't just make us fall. It makes us stand. It makes us creative. It enables us. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of understanding. The spirit spirit of knowledge the spirit of counsel the spirit of the fear of the lord the spirit of power the spirit of the lord the bible talks in the book of isaiah chapter 9 about the seven spirits of god the spirit of god makes you absolutely versatile some of you the breakthrough you need in your workplace is a new anointing you need an oil change oh come on somebody uh, did jesus not say wait tarry in jerusalem until you've been endured with power come on when you wait upon him you're not wasting because according to isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 those who wait those who wait not just on a boyfriend not just on a girlfriend those who wait upon the lord shall renew their strength and they shall mount up on wings like eagles they will run and not get weary they will walk and they will not faint it's not by mind nor by power but by my spirit says the lord of hope some of you you need an anointing to let go of pettiness we, hey, Basha, we are flowing in a level of pettiness that only the spirit can strip away uh, we, we need uh, oh, Bashakara. some things the reason why they are able to stay is because your water has stopped flowing it's become a dead sea you know you have become a half for unforgiveness you become a half for witchcraft and jealousy but God is saying I want to fill you up 